if there's a refrigerator in a forest and you close the refrigerator door and the refrigerator falls down in a forest and there's no one around to see the refrigerator light, does the refrigerator make a sound? Hello and welcome to Heavenly Album Covers, the only channel that you need, the only episodic video series covering album covers and music and other things that you really need. And we are here in the Heavenly Kitchen. Actually, we're very nearby and we're on top of the Heavenly, heavenly Stovetop here. And we're going to look at this album by Latino Cha Cha Cha. Actually, the album is by Tino Latino and his orchestra. The album title is Latino Cha Cha Cha, featuring a lot of Cha 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 music. Um, I brought a couple of books out from the warehouse and uh, just for fun, just to fill up time and um, bring some erudition to the proceedings. Ernie Bushmiller did a comic strip for decades called Nancy and uh, he did a few other comic strips. This is one of my personal all-time favorite books. It was very influential and I just love it. I I slide it out of the bookcase uh, once in a while just to uh, be in awe of Ernie Bushmiller. Ernie Bushmiller's uh, cartoons were real simple looking but they were in fact very complicated um, compositionally. Um, his jokes were sometimes silly, sometimes surreal, and Dadaistic. Um, and he just worked and worked and slaved over his cartoons. And his, um, his strips were actually well planned out, if I could find the bookmark here. And I did. And his, uh, his cartoons were just, um, almost mathematical. He would, uh, present ideas come through the entire strip and uh, present other characters. And just visually, his uh, strips were stunning and still are stunning and um, just great, great stuff. I think this book is currently hard to find, but it's worth finding somewhere. Um, right next to the Ernie Bushmiller book, I uh, pick, picked out these uh, Velvet Underground books that are really kind of nice as we carefully put the Velvet Underground book on top of the heavenly stove. We don't want to start a fire because we didn't start the fire and we don't start fires. And this book is called Uptight. It's a visual and textual avocation of the Velvet Underground. Interviews, photos, early years, some of the later years. Great book. Um, this is a exhaustive and almost exhausting book about the Velvet Underground by Richie Unterberger. And this has tons of information about the Velvet Underground, uh, gigs, recordings, uh, the people, the places, the characters, the record company execs, all of it. Great book. It's called White Light, White Heat. That one's easily available. And this is one of my favorite books about the Velvet Underground. It's called All Yesterday's Parties, and it contains um, reviews and articles written about the Velvet Underground at the time they existed. And it's kind of a sad book in a way because um, the Velvet Underground got very little press in their um, early years, almost zero press, but all of the articles are... The original articles are printed out in this book, and uh, it's very touching, very interesting. Um, I guess everyone supposes that uh, the Velvet Underground were just instantly popular, but they weren't. It, it was only years later that their reputation grew and became what it is today. So that's all Yesterday's Parties by Clinton Halen. I think Clinton Halen wrote a book on bootleg records, but I might be wrong. And so we get to Latino Cha-Cha-Cha by Tino Latino and his orchestra on 
Crown Records. That's um, that was a very popular record label. They put out kind of uh, A minus B quality uh, music albums, but um, they got the stuff out there, which is important. And um, Tino Latino was a uh, flute player, mostly, and a band leader. And uh, this has vocal um, vocal characteristics on it. There's singing on this and um, cha-cha music. It's real high energy stuff. It's interesting that in the late 50s, Dixieland music flourished and cha-cha-cha music flourished. The two dichotomies are worth noting. And um, this album has a major split in it. I'm going to have to put some uh, blue masking tape on the spine. And um, I've never seen liner notes this small, um, about half point of, of a type font here. This um, tells us how stereo works and technical data. A lot of these record companies put technical data on the back of their records because um, audiophile record collectors are always impressed by sonic details. And here's a little essay on uh, Mr. Tino Latino and his orchestra. It kind of goes on and on. There's only about uh, nine songs on this album, but I'm sure they are totally enjoyable. And on the cover, we have um, a woman, a dancer of uh, unknown note, and she's kind of growling at the camera. She's growling at the photographer. She um, is really hungry. She didn't have breakfast, and she's just uh, wants some cereal, wants a banana, or wants a, uh, some granola. And um, there she is dancing on the cover, uh, standing there on the heavenly stovetop. And um, this title, tiling, by the way, is working out really good. We had this place retiled when we moved in. And so um, this is the album cover. It's really awesome. It's great. What um, makes it even more special is it comes on, and it came on, and it has amazing red vinyl. Um, it was pressed on red vinyl and not your normal um, matte red vinyl, but this is translucent. You can actually see the the heavenly tile in the background. Um, they did a really good job on the grout, the grouting. And so um, it's just a beautiful shade of red. Normally I avoid uh, red vinyl, but this is just Fantastico. And so, as we gaze upon the heavenly blender and um, bid farewell to this woman who wants her breakfast, we bid farewell and we will see you again in the next episode of Heavenly Album Covers. When you're cleaning a blender, you have to watch out for these um, 